Say you want to eat one half of a pizza. So you take out your knife and cut the pizza right through the middle. So the pizza now is cut into two equal parts. So you have over two. And then if you eat one of these parts, you will have eaten one half of this pizza. Fair enough? Now imagine the pizza is already cut into four equal pieces. Can you still eat one half of it? Yes, you can. If you eat all of this and all of this, you will have eaten one half of the whole. Now from our knowledge on fractions, we know that the whole, when it is cut into four equal pieces, we have it as over four. And then if you eat two of them, you will have eaten two fourths of the whole. And that represents one half. If you look at the two pictures, they represent the same portion of the whole. So we could say one half is the same as two over four or two fourths. Fractions like this that have got different numerators and different denominators, but still represent the same part of the whole are called equivalent fractions. Now let's say we cut the same pizza into six equal pieces. Well, I'm going to try my best to make the pieces equal. But even if I cannot, you should assume the pieces are all the same size. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Now if you want to eat half of the whole again, you'll need to pick up three of these six pieces. Any three. Let's say these three. So this part again represents one half of the whole. And then, of course, it's three pieces out of six pieces. So as a fraction, it's three over six. And that's the same as one half. So one half, two fourths, three six are all called equivalent fractions. In fact, any fraction in which the denominator is exactly two times the numerator, like 4 and 2, like 6 and 3, is going to be equivalent to 1 half. For example, you could also say that if you cut the pizza into 100 equal pieces and eat 50 of those pieces, remember if you are cutting a pizza the same size into 100 pieces, each piece is going to be a lot smaller, thinner. So you would need to eat 50 of them to be able to say that, okay, I've eaten half the pizza. To find an equivalent fraction to a given fraction, simply multiply the numerator and the denominator with the same number. For example, if you multiply 1 with 2 and 2 with 2, you end up getting 1 times 2 as a 2, 2 times 2 as a 4, and that's equivalent to 1 half. Similarly, if you multiply the numerator 1 with 3 and the denominator 2 with 3, you end up getting 3 over 6. Take 3 over 6, multiply the numerator and the denominator, let's say each one of them with 15, just as an example. So you have 3 times 15, which is 45, and 6 times 15 is 90. So 45 over 90 is also equivalent to 3 over 6 and that in turn is equivalent to 1 half which means 45 over 90 is equivalent to 1 half. In fact, these are all equivalent fractions. They are like siblings. Similarly, the fractions 3 over 4 or 3 fourths, 6 eighths, 9 twelfths, 12 sixteenths, and so on, maybe 75 hundreds are all equivalent. Why? Because if you multiply 3 and 4 with the same number, you end up getting, depending on which number you are multiplying them with, you end up getting one of these fractions. 
For example, if you do the multiplication with 2, you get 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8. If you multiply them with 3, you get 3 times 3 is 9 and 4 times 3 is 12. If you multiply them with 25, you can multiply them with any number as long as the number you're multiplying with is the same. So 3 times 25 is 75 and 4 times 25 is 100. So they are all equivalent. Let's say 2 thirds is equivalent to a certain fraction that's something over 24. Can you find out this number? 2 thirds is equivalent to how much over 24? Yes, you can. Remember, for equivalent fractions, the numerator and the denominator needs to be multiplied with the same number. So all you need to do is relate 3 with 24. So you know that 3 times 8 is 24. Therefore, you know that on the top, it also has to be a times 8. No other number will make it equivalent, the new fraction. Therefore, 2 times 8 is 16. So this number over here is 16. So 2 thirds is equivalent to 16 over 24. Similarly, if I were to ask you 3 over 7 is equal to 15 over a number, can you find this number out? Well, it's pretty much the same thing. You try and relate 3 with 15 because the numerators are given in this case and you know that 3 times 5 is 15. Therefore, the denominator, which is 7, also needs to be multiplied with 5 to keep the fractions equivalent. Therefore, 7 times 5 is 35. So we say 3 over 7 or 3 sevenths is equivalent to 15 35ths. Imagine I have a fraction n over d, n for numerator and d for denominator. I multiply the numerator and the denominator with the same number to get one of its equivalent forms. And the new fraction I get is 48 over 64. And the question is, what was the original fraction? What was n over d? Now, as I have multiplied n and d with the same number to get to 48 and 64, if I want to go the other way, starting from 48 over 64, if I want to find out n over d, I need to divide them with that same number, right? But the question is, what is that number? What is such a number that we have divided both n and d with so that we got 48 and 64? Now, because this multiplication factor was the same, same with n and d, that's how you get an equivalent fraction. When we do the opposite of multiplication, that is when we divide 48 and 64, we need to divide them with the same number, correct? So then what can that number be? Think of the numbers that could divide 48 and 64 both. Maybe 2. Okay. So 48 divided with 2 is 24 and 64 divided with 2 is 32. So is it that n was 24 and d was 32 and we multiplied both of them with 2? we ended up with 48 over 64? Maybe. But hey, hang on! I can still divide 24 and 32 with another 2. Can I? So 24 divided with 2 is 12 and 32 divided with 2 is 16. So is my fraction 12 over 16? Or 24 over 32? But wait! 12 and 16 are both even numbers, so I can continue dividing with 2. So I have 12 divided by 2, which is 6 on the top, 16 divided with 2, which is 8 on the bottom. So maybe n over d was 6 over 8? And you guessed it right, these two are still even numbers, which means you can continue doing that. Divide with 2, divide with 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3 on the top, 8 divided by 2 is 4 at the bottom. So is n over d 3 over 4? Or the numbers can still go down. Can we find a number that we could divide 3 and 4 with? 
Well, 3 is an odd number, 4 is even, and 3 is a prime number. 3 can divide 4. The only number that can divide 3 and 4, both is 1. But then division with 1 is not going to change them. 3 divided by 1 is 3, 4 divided 1 is 4. So 3 fourths stays the same. So no point dividing with 1 doesn't make sense. So all these 3 fourths, 6 eighths, 12 sixteenths, 24 30 seconds, 48 60 fourths, they're all equivalent fractions. They are just different forms of the same number on the number line. They represent the same number, they represent the same part of the whole. And this process of continuing to divide the numerator and denominator of fractions with the same number until you can divide no more is called reducing a fraction. So this process is called reducing. And then the fraction, in this case 3 fourths, that cannot be reduced further. There was no number other than 1 that could divide 3 and 4 both. That fraction, the one with the smallest numerator and the smallest denominator, is called the fraction in the simplest form. Notice that dividing with larger numbers will take you to the simplest form in fewer number of steps. So starting from 48 over 64, if you could figure out, okay, how about dividing both of them with 4 in place of 2? That works, yes. 48 divided with 4 is 12. 64 divided with 4 is 16. So you skip this step. There's no 24, 30 seconds. You directly land over here. And then again, if you could figure out, hey, I can divide them with 4 again. So I have 12 divided with 4. I have a 3 on the top. 16 divided with 4. 4 on the bottom. Just two steps. Look here. It took us four steps. You might have been smart enough to figure out that no, I could divide 48 and 64 with 8. Yes, that works. 48 divided with 8 is 6. 64 divided with 8 is 8. You straight away jump to this step, 6 eighths. And then divide this with 2, this with 2, you get the answer. 3 fourths. Or maybe if you're even smarter, you would start by dividing 48 and 64 with 16, which happens to be their greatest common factor or the GCF. The greatest common factor between 48 and 64 is 16. There's no other number greater than 16 that can divide both 48 and 64. And there you go, 48 divided with 16 is 3, 64 divided with 16 is 4. It takes you just one step to get to the simplest form. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, let's say we want to reduce the fraction 135 over 180. So how do you go about? Find a number, of course other than 1, that can divide both 135 and 180. And the easiest one I could think of is 5. So I'm going to divide this with 5. And remember, a fraction bar is the same as division. So I could write the division sign or the fraction bar. So 135 over 5 or divided with 5 and 180 divided with 5. 135 divided with 5 is 27 and 180 divided with 5 is 36. Think of a number that could divide 27 and 36 both. You could go for 3. 3 times 9 is 27. 3 times 12 is 36. I would go with 9 because I know that 9 times 3 is 27. So I have a 3 on the top. 9 times 4 is 36. 4 on the bottom. So I could skip a step in between. So the simplest form again turns out to be 3 fourths. And 
if there was a way for you to figure out that the GCF are the greatest common factor of 135 and 180 is 45, you could have just done this with one step. You could have divided 135 with 45. You would have got a 3 over here. 45 times 3 is 135. And 180 divided with 45 would give you a 4. 45 times 4 is 180. Hope that helps. I'll see you in another video.